Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And what I wanna do in this video is just kinda of show you some of these uh, components that I have already pre-built in this template, like row. Okay, so let's just take a look at the code. So row, and then basically small card and big card pretty much have the same pattern. So what I did here is just basically takes one prop, that's the class. So if you wanted to pass in a custom class to, like you want all your rows, so these rows already have one class row so anytime you use this row component it's going to feed off that class but what if you have a particular row you want to treat slightly differently you can pass it in, pass in a string as a prop called the class and it, it'll interpolate it so that way it has that second class so that way you can customize that particular row and all this does is just wraps any children inside of it inside a, a, a flex box row that's that's really all it does so for example, let's, let me just do an example. And then big card and small card pretty much are just small, smaller cards that are Flexbox columns, but they work the same way where they have a, a base class. And then as a prop, you can pass in another class. And notice how I put the question mark here. When you're doing your interfaces, if you put a question mark at the end of the name like that, that just means it's optional. So like if it's not there, TypeScript won't freak out. So keep that in mind. Uh, that you label which of your properties on an interface are optional versus not optional. Okay, so you guys get the basic idea there. So let's show you an example of using these. And then Navi is just a navigation. So what it'll do, it'll just basically iterate over a bunch of divs under the class navigation, so you can style it there. Okay, and basically what you have is it just iterates a bunch of divs so that way, and then you can style the navigation as a navigation bar. But basically you just pass it in an object that basically has this structure. And this is just another version of that, how you can structure that. So instead of creating a separate interface, like I did in the previous video, you could do syntax like this to define your, your um, objects. Although the way I showed you before is probably cleaner and a little bit more clear. Um, but that's just another way you can get to the same place. Okay. Cool. So let's actually go to our app.tsx and show you how these work. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to wrap this in a fragment. And then I'm going to let's put a row. And all the row does is going to take any children you have. So you can just put whatever you want here in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll put in a, a couple small cards. Small card. I'm not going to pass in any particular classes, but I'm just going to say hello. And we'll do a few of these. And hmm, it's complaining. Let's see why. Oh, because it's not row, it's row capital. Okay, on top of that, I haven't actually imported row. I imported small card. Interesting. But I have not imported row yet. So let me import row. So let's, and again, I, I did these as just standard exports, not as default exports. So you do need the structure, the the import. So it's component slash row. The name, file name is lowercase. There we go. So again, all those little errors that VS Code will throw you makes life a lot easier to, to find the errors before runtime. So hello. And let's copy a couple more of these. Cheese. Wee. Okay. And let's go back and take a look at the, the file. Okay. And see, notice how it put them in a flex box row. Okay. And then each one you have a card. And again, you can style these cards however you want to make it work for whatever you're doing. Um, cool, one, two, three. Now now let's see what happens if I took off the row. So you can understand why the row matters. If I took off row. Then they just become columns, okay? So that's, that's all row really does. It just allows you to create a columns and anything you wrap in it, okay? And then same thing with small card, except it wraps everything in a column. So if I were to do like H1, 
H1. Hello, and I did a few H1s. Let's do like three or four of them. It'll all stick to that card. One, two, three. Uh, they can all just say hello, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, so it's all in that card. So you have those, and again, if you want to change the colors, or whatever, you can just put it right here. Just change it right there in the main CSS, and you don't even have to. You could actually create a CSS file for each individual. Um, well, you could. You would just have to import it. The way I have it right now is that this main CSS file is being imported in the index.html. So it's a link here. So it's easier enough to just do it there. I guess you could add other CSS files if you wanted and other links. Uh, I have a feeling that I had trouble with the import when I, tr I tried to do the CSS import and Parcel didn't seem to catch it when I tried it. It's supposed to, I just it just didn't work for me. Um, but this works. I just put that there and then what happens when like let's say we run build okay so right now it's running and when you're doing a temp when you're doing the dev environment it puts all your build here in this debug folder so it's a temporary version of it but if i were to control c this and then hit npm npm run build it's going to build it so i'm going to let it do that It'll build it, and you'll notice there's another folder now in this, and here's your release folder, which is the version that you actually would put up online, all bundled up for you. But otherwise, everything you would normally do in React, you just do here, okay? Um, but you don't have to worry about all the configuration. You just download this template and make your application. Go use, I do recommend you know using function components with hooks. You should be fine with class components. I don't think there's any particular special syntax if it's a class component, um, because you're not, because technically you're not, a class is a type, so you don't need to type it. Well, a function is a value, so you need to type the value in a sense, uh, or you need to type what it returns. And essentially what a, a function component does, what it returns is the JSX as a functional component. So that's that's sort of the deal. No, a class is just a class. But I always just like the function component syntax better. And notice, yeah, there you go. You got a nice, nice folder, whatnot. Okay, and it already kind of basically is going to swap things out. So every time it does it, it's going to give you a different number. So notice how you see this F2, Fab, 705. Okay, every time it's going to be different. So your CSS, so what I do recommend is every time you're about to rebuild it, delete this release folder, unless you want to keep the older versions or, you know, save it some, you know, change the name to like release one, release two, release three. So that way it makes a new release folder. So that way you know which one is sort of your most recent version of this file. The reason why it does all the random numbers, if you're not familiar with like how all this works, is that it's to prevent caching. Because if you just keep, if it just kept coming out as app.js, and you know this is a thing in Webpack. Like you could just use a default, and it would just come back as app.js in that folder. But if you do that, then you run the risk that the person who's looking at your website caches the file, and then even though you updated it, they don't see the updates because it's reading from their cache. But if you keep changing the name of the file every time, so that's what this hash is, it prevents the cache. So it's going to try to download this new file that it's never downloaded before because it has a unique name, and then that user never has to worry about this caching issue just so you understand why it's doing that. But Parcel will take care of that for you. You don't have to worry about it. You just go develop, make a cool app, have fun. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and will enjoy this template. And if you guys enjoy the template and you guys enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please follow me on Twitter. Please um, follow me on LinkedIn and uh, you know, keep in touch. Thank you. Have a great day. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com.